Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I have a recipe that I am so beyond excited to share. It's basically the pulled pork of the Mexican world, and if you know that, you know I'm talking about one thing. Carnitas, yes indeed, it is carnitas. Do I have food in my teeth? There we go. I think I'm all better now. Now let me tell you something. This is one of the easiest things you'll make. It's something you literally just rub some, you know, pork shoulder and then you're just gonna throw it in the instant pot with some, you know, amazing juices in there. And then when it's done, we're just gonna shred it up. But one of the best things about carnitas, guys, that sets it apart from a typical pulled pork is we end it with a little bit of a crisp. So that meat gets a nice crispy edge to it. But at the same time, it still remains super juicy. And there's no such thing as dry carnitas in this kitchen, guys. So let's get right to the Instant Pot and have a fiesta because it's about to get real. Carnitas. If you crave meatas, try my carnitas. <laughs> That's a good one, I think. So let's just start with some prep and take a large Spanish onion and then just slice it into four wedges. And don't worry about removing the layers within the wedge, just keep them exactly as they are, all right? And now I'll take two limes and juice them. Okay, now I wanna take an array of spices here, guys. I wanna take one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of cumin, a half a tablespoon of oregano, two teaspoons of seasoned salt, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, and a quarter of a teaspoon of some ground cinnamon. I know it seems like a lot, but guys, these are the most basic spices you can, you probably already have them in your cupboard. Or if not, you can find them anywhere. And also, it's necessary to really give that pork its amazing carnitas flavor. So let's just take a fork now and just swirl everything together so it's nice and combined. And there we go, perfect. There is our dry rub for our pork. And speaking of which, let's get porky. And here is our pork. Now, you have options here, all right? I'm using a boneless pork shoulder that's already been sliced into strips. This is from Costco, and this is about five pounds worth of pork shoulder, and it's boneless, and like I said, it's everything's already done for me here. So it's five strips, it's about a pound per strip. You can use between really three to, to six pounds if you want for this recipe. It's all gonna fit in the six quart. If you wanna double it up to even, I don't know, like 10 to 12 pounds, you could probably do that in the eight quart. But I feel like five pounds is already gonna be a lot, and it's gonna serve a ton of people people figure between at least like six to ten so you can go for three pounds if you want but it's not going to change any of the cook time regardless whether you go to Costco and it's already sliced up and deboned for you or you go to the market and you have to get a boneless one yourself and slice it into quarters or pieces or if you could only find a bone in pork shoulder that's fine too you're gonna just leave it as it is you're not gonna do any cutting if there's already a bone in there and like I said if you get one that's already a pork shoulder and boneless in the market but not pre-cut just make sure you pre-cut it into about a pound each per strip all right so so now what I want to do is I want to take all this pork and then I want to kind of like coat it in that amazing, amazing dry rub I just created. All right, in a strip at a time, I'm just going to place it in a bowl or whatever, a large size dish. And then just take my rub and kind of just like sprinkle it on. Don't put too much because remember we have to make it all last for all of our pork. And we just want to give it a nice coating, really. All right, and that's looking good. Perfect. Now just continue with all the rest of our pork. And you see, you're gonna get some of it inside the bowl itself, that's fine. Just use it to just like, you know, roll around on the pork so it gets nice and dabbed up. Literally the most intensive part of this recipe is what you're doing right here. All right, and there we go, guys. I have all of my pork here nice and covered with my seasonings, and it was really just the right amount. If you have extra seasonings and you weren't using about five pounds of pork shoulder, that's fine. Just keep it and just cover it as much as you can. Having extra seasoning is not gonna be a bad thing, especially since you'll see at the end, we're gonna kind of drain everything when it cooks and reserve just a little bit okay and now it's time to move to the pot and guys again so easy so far now the first thing I want to add in my pot is going to be beer now if you don't want to use beer you don't have to use beer you can absolutely use broth in its place this is one cup of beer and I am using guys well since it's a Mexican dish Corona beer. You can really use any kind of beer. You can use Budweiser, you can use any kind of lager you want all right so I'm putting that in one cup of it and again, you can absolutely sub broth, chicken broth, beef broth, whatever you want. And carnitas are known for a slight citrus infusion in terms of the flavor. So of course, we're gonna add some citrus in there. I'm going to add in a half a cup of orange juice, as well as the juice of my two limes. I'm also gonna add in two tablespoons or six cloves of crushed or minced garlic. 
And now we'll just give that a little bit of a stir in the pot to get everything nice and mixed together. And now we're going to take our four onion wedges. This is going to kind of serve as a trivet for the pork and just put them in round side down. Okay, perfect. And now we're going to rest our pork strips right on top. And you can crisscross them if you'd like. There we go. And again, about five to six pounds is really the max you want to go in the six quart. This is about just over five pounds, like about five and a quarter or so. Uh, but you can go for six. It'll fit in just fine. We have perfect space here. And now what we got to do, guys, is pressure cook. I'm going to secure my lid, make sure that I'm in the ceiling position. Now I want to come down to the pot and hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And I want to go, guys, for an entire hour on this, 60 minutes. Some models will say 60, some will say 1, and then colon zero, 00. To the right of the colon are minutes, to the left are hours. And no matter how much meat I have in there, I want it to be for an hour, okay? Whether it's 3 pounds or whether it's 7 pounds, one hour. Oh, don't mind me. <laughs> I'm just, you know, yeah, it would be a crime to let this beer go to waste while my carnitas are cooking. Stop judging me. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to allow a 10 minute natural release. That means we do absolutely nothing for 10 minutes until this reads, well, 10. Then we'll finish it off with a quick release. And now that 10 minutes of a natural release have passed, because again, this reads 10. That's how you know it's been 10 minutes. Let's finish this off with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take the lid off and look at all of that pork. And look at how much liquid is in this pot after pressure cooking. I only put in about, I don't know, one and three quarters cups total liquid before pressure cooking. You couldn't even see it when I put the lid on. Now it's coming all the way up here. Guys, that's from all the amazing drippings and the amazing rich flavors of the pork. And I'm just going to save some of that and reserve it, and then we're going to pour it over our pork once it's shredded. But one thing after another. Let's get some tongs. Oh man, this is falling apart. Oh, perfect. And let's put all of our pork inside of a bowl. I mean, this is going to fall apart and that's exactly what you want. It's so tender. We're gonna be shredding it up in two seconds anyway. See the onions in there? When it cooked, put those in with the pork too. All right, and here's all of my pork transferred to a bowl, along with all those onions. You want those onions there, guys. And now, guys, we're going to take about a third of a cup of this broth, a third of a cup to about a half a cup, and we're going to pour it over our pork. And now we can either save or we can discard the rest. If you want to freeze this for another day, feel free. You have a great, like, pork broth here. Whatever you decide, just make sure we get it out of the liner pot and remove it from the Instant Pot and then drop the pot right back into the Instant Pot. All right? Don't have to clean that or anything. We're going to focus on this in a second. But in the meantime, let's focus on our pork and shred it up. And to make that happen, all we need is to just take two forks and just shred the pork apart. Sometimes people like to use hand mixers or stand mixers for this, and you can totally do that. But I want this to be pretty substantial. Also, you're going to notice there's some fat in there. If you want to leave it in there and mix it in with it, by all means, feel free to. It's just going to add amazing flavor. But you could also pick it out. But I can assure you, this is not like the chewy type of fat. It's just melting your mouth like butter and full of flavor kind of fat. And I mean, this takes no time at all. We're talking like 45 seconds to shred this up. And guys, really? I'm done here in terms of all my shredding. We are done. Beautiful carnitas. But wait, there's more. We want to add a little bit of a crisp to this because carnitas typically have that. And so, because I have the Instant Pot air fryer lid, I'm going to do this directly right back in my Instant Pot. However, if you don't have one, you can transfer the meat to a foil line baking sheet or whatever, and you can then just broil in the oven for a few minutes. But since I have the amazing Instant Pot air fryer lid, I'm going to do it in there. I'm going to show you how. All right, I'm going to take a slotted spoon now because I don't want to get too much liquid in there, and I'm going to add my pork into the pot and now I'm going to add my air fryer lid it's right on top of the pot and now I want to hit the broil button it's gonna be at 400 degrees and I want to go with this guys the very first time I'm gonna crisp before I turn it over for eight minutes at broil which is the max temp 400 degrees hit start and there we go that's the end cool all right now let's hit cancel and I'm gonna take the lid off and let's check this out after eight minutes of putting the crisping lid on Oh, man. Guys, those are carnitas. Oh, wow. Look at that. All right. Now, I'm going to take my spoon here. Oh, God, look at that. You can hear it. Do you hear that? Oh, it's amazing. What I'm going to do now is just give everything a bit of a stir. 
just kind of put everything that was on the bottom, on the top rather, on the bottom, and now everything that was on the bottom on the top, so we give that a little crisp, and then we should be golden here, guys. So I'm gonna put my lid right back on top. Perfect. And this time around, I wanna go for, again, on broil for about four minutes, all right? That's it, and it's gonna be perfect. If you wanna do more or less, you can just check on it to whatever crispiness you wish to achieve. And we're all set, so I'm gonna hit the cancel button here, lift my lid up again, and then rest it. Oh, that looks amazing. Look at that glorious, beautiful carnitas. Okay, oh wow, this is unbelievable. And guys, it's not gonna dry out because there's some liquid still in there from when we got all of our pork nice and juicy with the broth. It's perfect. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer this to a serving dish. Oh man, just look at it. Just look at that. And look at these beautiful carnitas, guys. I mean, come on. This crisp lid is seriously like a miracle. It's a gift from the heavens. Gorgeous. And I'll tell you right now, this isn't gonna need any additional seasoning at all. It's perfect as it is from that amazing rub that we put on there, and then the amazing juices it cooked in with the orange juice and the citrus and the beer. However, if you wish to do this, this is totally optional, and in my opinion, not necessary, you can also add in about a quarter of a cup to a, a half a cup of your favorite salsa, and just put it on top, and then just stir that all around within the carnitas to give it some, it, just even more flavor than it already has. It's absolutely perfect. Same thing with taco sauce. If you wanted to add taco sauce, you can do that too. I don't think it needs it, but if you want to give it something else, feel free. A lot of people ask me what taco sauce is. It's this stuff. It says taco sauce on it. And for that, I'd also go no more than a quarter of a cup. And then just toss it around in all the carnitas after it's crisp. Don't add these sauces until the very last step because we want our carnitas to get nice and crisped. Oh, and they're so moist on top of it at the same time. It's absolutely perfect. Oh, okay guys, now I'm gonna serve these up. And there's really so many ways to do this. I'm just gonna get a flour or corn tortilla. I don't wanna start a war here over the tortillas, <laughs> which one you like to prefer to use. But I'm just gonna add now a little bit of the carnitas to it, and you can dress it any way you want. If you wanna put some sour cream on there, some guacamole, some salsa, whatever you want. I'm just gonna put a little bit of cheese, and I'm just gonna roll this baby up, and now I am going to try it out. And here we go, guys. Let's do it. Oh. Dios mio. I mean, mm, this is outrageous. It's scrumptious. The flavors in here, mm, to die for. To die for. The pork, it's so juicy. It is like just so melt in your mouth juicy. Yet at the same time, it's finished off to a crisp. Look, look. Trying to have it focus on the meat and not me. There we go. Look at how beautiful that is. A slight chaw, a perfect crisp. And now, we're gonna try it out here. Seriously? It's hard for me to decide whether I like pulled pork more or carnitas more, which is basically, you know, the Mexican version of pulled pork. The flavors, I mean, if you have that citrus, they have a slight tinge of citrus and a little bit of sweet in there, but not overpowering at all. It's more savory than anything else. Mm, but the flavor combination, oh, it's one to behold, guys. I am so sold on this. And also, it's on the healthier side for a recipe. I never turned my oven on. I did it all in one pot. I mean, it, it's a little cleanup really to do here. It's amazing, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Oh man, that lid alone is worth it for this recipe. Hey Richard! So, now we got Richard trying out the carnitas. And you have Banjo having, oh, well, there you go. Mm. Oh my gosh. What do you think? That's really, really good. Yeah? Banjo! <laughs> Come here. Come it really here. tastes like really, really great carnitas. I mean, yeah. it is great carnitas. Yeah, I mean, it's like literally made with the easiest ingredients. This dog is having a conniption because he wants some. I, mean, I could really try a taco with this or a burrito or... You could, you could literally put it in anything. Nachos. Uh, over a salad even. Um, nachos is a great idea. Um, and it's really about, I'm stealing some. It's really about my crisp. And it's like, really, you saw, it's so easy to do. This dog is losing his mind. What do you think? You can't have. No, sorry, we're not yeah. right now, not right now. Not right now, but he, he sh he's like trembling in my hands right now. He's so hungry for it. <laughs> so, you approve. Awesome. 
and it makes, guys, this makes a lot. Like, you'll saw, it makes a lot. I mean, look at this gigantic platter of carnitas. It's a lot. And if you want to, in, I mean, we're talking about, you could easily feed, like, I guess, like, out of this, like, I'd say six healthy appetites, maybe four super healthy appetites, but up to eight if you're more, being a little more dainty. You want to make some little sliders, even. But again, look at this. You hear that? I know it's gross to chew with your mouth open, but I want you to hear that, like, succulent bite into the actual meat. And again, the choice is yours if you want to add extra seasoning at the end. I would suggest if you want to, add about a quarter to a half a cup of your favorite salsa, mix it in, and maybe up to about a quarter of a cup of even some taco sauce. Those are totally optional and not necessary as far as I'm concerned, but it's going to add a little bit more of a flavor. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is truly a dynamite, dynamite recipe. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, hey Richard, check out PressureLuckCooking.com. I have a ton of recipes there. Pre-order my new cookbook, or if the cookbook's already out at the time you're watching this video, get it. It's an unbelievable book, I promise. Glorious, full of over 750 photos of step-by-step -step directions for every recipe. Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking. Like that page for any time a new recipe drops, tips, sales on items, fun stuff in general. General. And of course, at Pressure Luck, subscribe to me on YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. So guys, uh, I don't know what to tell you except other than if you're a carnivore, it's time to eat carnitas. Unbelievable. All right, Banj. All right. Oh, this one. This little yenta down here. All right. All right. Not until I have another piece. Mm.